Welcome everyone. Welcome to Commerce Mortgage's RealPro Features webinar. My name is Coy Peltz and I am the Director of Development for RealPro. I also have Lori Flores, the Marketing Manager for Commerce Mortgage, on the webinar with me today. Say hello, Lori. Hello, everyone. So everyone on the webinar has been muted. We keep everyone muted in order to keep the audio quality from being interrupted by phones or uh, dogs barking, etc. Lori and I play dual roles on this webinar. I provide the content and Lori lets me know if we have any questions. We want you to leave this webinar feeling good about what you learned today regarding RealPro and if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them in the question box. Lori can view the questions and she'll let me know as soon as a question comes in from the audience. We try to answer all of the questions that come in, so don't be afraid to ask. Commerce Mortgage hosts three RealPro webinars each month, RealPro Basics, RealPro Features, and How to Make Money with RealPro. We common re commonly refer to them as RealPro 101, 201, and 301. Today you're on the RealPro Features webinar, or RealPro 201. This webinar provides instructional overview of existing RealPro features and will also introduce new RealPro features, such as our plans for IDX property search and our flyer system. So to get started today, hopefully everyone uh, has been able to attend the RealPro 101 webinar and um, already has their account set up. So I'm going to move along assuming that everybody already has an account set up. When a realtor signs in to their back office after their account has been set up, it's going to look um, very similar to this. And as I went over in the 101 webinar, we, um, we did talk about how to add a listing by MLS ID, and, uh, but we didn't talk about adding listings manually. And one reason that adding listing, listings manually is very important is because we encourage everyone to list their listing in RealPro before they list it in their MLS as long as their rules allow that. Many MLSs will give you, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours to enter in a listing before it has to be submitted. Um, the reason we try to encourage people to do this um, is for several reasons. First of all, it gets their property out there to the websites such as Trulia and Zillow and other websites and it gives you a chance to capture that lead for yourself. So you, hopefully you can get both sides of the listing because if somebody's on the Zillow website and they call for you from your property or even our website, you know, they would call you directly um, versus it being on the MLS to where maybe they're working with um, another real estate agent. So if you can do that, you'd want to go ahead and add one manually. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you how easy it is because manually is not necessarily difficult. When people hear the word manual, they're like, oh gosh, that's going to be really tough. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically I just have to enter in some basic information about a property. And I have a property already selected. Um, I, I believe it was the one that I entered in on the, uh, the 101 webinar. But I did it um, by using the MLS ID. So I'm just going to do it manually this time. Again, it's just asking some very simple information. Um, not too difficult. And then we can add amenities if we want, but uh, again, I'm not too concerned with that. And then it's um, And like I went over in the 101 webinar, if we have external YouTube videos, meaning if we've created a YouTube video of our own or if we have a walkthrough, we could enter those URLs here. But then I'm just going to click Save and then Next. And then it's telling me that that URL is already used because I did already enter that property in um, last week. So let's, I just changed it up a little bit. And now I'm going to come to this screen um, to where I can um, give a listing caption. I'm going to make this property active and then I can select files. So, um, and this is something that uh, is really easy. It's very easy to upload pictures. That's one of the reasons a lot of agents um, really don't act like they want to do something manually because they think that they picture upload process is very difficult, but our system is actually very easy to use. We can sit here and highlight all of the properties that we want to do in one shot. We're not limited to uploading, you know, like five at a time or three at a time. We can upload them all. 
So I'm going to select all of the ones that I would like to upload, and you can see here, you can see the progress um, of each one when it's uploading. And again, the faster your internet connection, the faster these are going to upload. But again, that was a, a very easy and simple process, um, not very hard to do. And uh, just like I went over in the 101 webinar, if you want to change the order, you know, if you don't like the order that they got uploaded, you know, it's not a problem. You can just drag and drop the pictures, um, you know, so you can easily change the order. So it's, it's very simple to do. And as you can see here, we do have one red um, photo, and the red photo means that uh, the quality of that picture probably isn't as good as what the other ones are, and when we display that on our website, we're probably going to stretch it a little bit that may cause some blurriness. So I actually put that one in there for a reason so we could see the difference um, between the red and the green. Again, that's very important when you guys are uploading your listings. Um, you, you would like to have all of them green um, because they'll just look a lot better on your website. But as you can see here, we've already entered in all of this other information. If we have any listing documents um, that we would like to add, um, such as homeowner association bylaws or anything like that, we can easily upload them here. Um, let's make sure we're active and then click save. And that's it. So uh, we've actually created the website um, you know, already. So it's, it's that simple to do. Um, so that, that's how easy it is to add a listing manually. So I just wanted everybody to be aware of um, you know, why we should add them manually because it will um, help get your property out on Zillow and Trulia faster and, uh, you know, and it's just a, a good practice to get into the habit of doing um, so hopefully you can get some you know, double side you know, or represent both the buyer and the seller on one of your transactions. So um, let's see, it did, I just logged myself out of that person. So that's how we add a listing manually. Um, and then we can go to our active listings here. We should be able to view. The website that we just put in. We, we can view any of these websites. Let's see. So here's the, the listing that we just made. And then some of the other features that we have that we uh that we didn't haven't really talked about yet um, are you know Craigslist. So if we'd like to post our listing to Craigslist, I know a lot of people don't necessarily use Craigslist or they, uh, you know, they think, ah, who, who would look for a property on Craigslist? But I can tell you that uh, there are a ton of people who start their property search on Craigslist and who go through and look at those listings all the time. So what we've done is we've made it really easy for you to make Craigslist postings. And the way you can do that is you do have to have a Craigslist account. Um, so you would go to your local Craigslist and you would sign up for an account. And then after you get an account, you would say that you wanted to post a property for sale, and you would say uh, you would post by broker because that is a you know you are a real estate broker, so you would post by broker, and then um, from there you would fill out the information on the property. But in the description of the property, um, instead of typing in you know or trying to upload photos, what you can do is you can copy and paste this HTML that we have here by uh, clicking copy. Just right click in this box and click copy. And then you can click paste into the Craigslist description field. And what that will do is it will make your Craigslist ad look uh, very, in fact, it will make it look exactly like this. And what we have is we have uh, several pictures of the property. And we have uh, um, the main picture, picture of the property here, along with the, uh, the description that we have. And then if somebody clicks on this play button here where it says go to the listing page, 
it will actually bring them back to the single property website that we have created. So that's uh, that's one way to uh, you know to market on Craigslist. I would say that uh, a good portion of the leads that come in through the system are from Craigslist, and uh, you know and really for every lead that comes in to the system from Craigslist, there's probably about uh, close to ten phone calls that come in um, from talking to agents who do a lot of marketing on Craigslist. So. That's, uh, that's one of the features that we've added in here. We also have a uh, Feature My Home um, link on every web page that we create. And on the Feature My Home um, link, what this is, this is for for sale by owners. If you'd like to market to for sale by owners, you can direct them directly to your website and say, you know, go to the Feature My Home link and I can help market your home as long as they're willing to uh, pay you a commission for finding a buyer. This is a, a great way for you to help a for sale by owner at least um, you know, get their property out on Zillow and Truly and Craigslist and take care, um, advantage of all of the syndication options that I'm going to go over um, here in a little bit. And uh, the best part about this is, is you know, when somebody calls on that listing from Zillow or from you know, Truly or any place that we syndicate to, they're going to be calling you. They're not going to be calling that for sale by owner. So hopefully you can pick up um, some buyers that way. But if somebody, if anyone goes to the feature my home link, um, you know, basically they'll come here, they'll fill out their information, they'll fill out their property details for you, and they can upload all of their photos. They can basically enter in the listing by themselves. And after they do that, we will send you an email letting you know that somebody has asked to have their home featured on your website. At that point, you can log into your back office, and as you see here, um, you know, we have a featured request, and we have two of them. I just haven't activated them yet. So if somebody goes there, they can uh, basically they can go in and try to edit. They see the information, and uh, they can go in and try to edit, you know, make sure that all the information for that property is there, and they, then they can activate it. And basically, um, it'll, it'll work just like every other listing that we create for you. We'll do everything, such as create the YouTube videos and syndicate it out and give you the single property websites and the mobile websites and everything. So... Um, you know that's that's one feature that we have that uh, a lot of people um, like to use to attract some more um, you know some more clients. So also some other features that we have on our website um, is we create several different virtual tours for every property that we have. Let me see here. Let me go to one of the properties. So we can go here and click Watch Virtual Tour. As you can see here, this, this is uh, set to music. And uh, it's basically a slideshow virtual tour where somebody can skip through all the pictures. And it has uh, your information here over to the right. But if you need a link to a tour that is a, um, you know, an MLS compliant virtual tour, basically you can only show a slideshow and you can't have your information there. We did create a link for you, um, and what you would do is you would go to the virtual tour page and change this to MLS tour, which I hold on, I typed in the wrong thing. So if you change that, um, the URL from HD tour to MLS tour. And again, my computer is running a little slow here this afternoon. This will actually uh, the load a tour without any branding on it, so which is very important because um, a lot of times your MLS or Realtor.com or places like that won't allow you to have a branded tour. So this is an easy way for you guys to take advantage of an unbranded virtual tour. So again, all you do is you change the HD underscore tour to MLS tour. Also, for every website that we create, um, we create a, a flyer for you guys. And I'm going to show you what our flyers look like. I'm just going to open it up in a new tab here. And our flyer does take a little bit to load because we create it live on the fly. So if you have any pictures, you know, we don't create a flyer and then save it in our back office. Uh, because if you change pictures or change the price or something like that, it, uh, it wouldn't be accurate. So what we do is we, uh, we create a new flyer um, on the fly every time. 
And as you can see here, it does take a few seconds to load. As you can see here, we have this flyer. Um, and what we do is when we create the flyer, the first picture is the, our main background picture. And then uh, the second picture is here, and then the third picture, and then the fourth picture. So if you'd like different pictures on your flyers, what you can do is log into your back office, and you can change the order of your pictures if you'd like them in a different order. But that kind of brings me to my next point, and, and I believe I mentioned this last month, and we did have a few delays, uh, but I am going to um, log into an account on my development server and show you guys what else we're doing with flyers. So we've had a lot of compliments on this flyer, and people really like this flyer, but we've also had a lot of uh, requests to have different flyers for our agents. So what we've been working on for the last several months is a, a design center for you guys. So let me go ahead and log into a back office um, on my development server, which is here. And then we're creating a design center, and hopefully, um, you know, I'm just showing you this because I know it's going to be out before next month's webinar, and so I, I figured I'd go ahead and show you guys basically how it works. Um, right now, we have uh, two different fields. We have custom flyers and postcards, so I'm just going to go ahead and click the custom flyer here, and as you can see, we have uh, several different templates to choose from with different backgrounds, and uh, so I'm just going to click the first one. And what happens is, is when I clicked on that first flyer, it says, you know what, this flyer requires four photos. So it shows all the properties that you have to have at least four photos. And then you would click one of the properties that you want to make it for. And then you, can, then you come to our design page. And our design page is really easy to use. The only thing you do is you just take your photos and you drag and drop your photos on where you would like them. The same goes for these pictures. And all of these pictures had a border on them, but what our system does is it allows you to crop them. As you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm dragging down, so I'm cropping off the top and bottom gray border that happened to be on the picture that I uploaded. If you don't have any borders and you, uh, you, know, you, just wanna, you don't want to crop it, you can just click this Easy Make It Fit button, and that will just um, you know, make that picture fit in the box that we have. So then there we have a, a nice flyer here, and if we want, we can uh, make a few changes to make everything more readable. We can so we make the text more readable by, readable by adding a shadow or things like that. We can also name this flyer, and uh, so if you want to give it a special name, because we will save it in your back office for you. So you can access this flyer at any time. You can also change the property description. If you, don't, if you want to have something different on your flyer than what you have um, on your main property description, you can easily edit it here. And then you can even type more information. And you, as you can see, as you type, it goes live on the screen. So you can see exactly what your flyer is going to look like when you're finished. And then when you're finished, you can click Save, or you can download it as a PDF. You can share it to Facebook or Twitter. And you can even, if you want to replace the flyer that we have for this, um, you know, if you don't like this flyer, you don't want people to see this flyer by default, um, you know, when they go to your single property web page, you can actually change it so they will actually see um, the new flyer that you've just created. So what we've done is we've created a complete design center for you guys to customize flyers and to make, you know, be able to edit them versus the default one that we have. And the reason, another reason I'm bringing this up to you guys even before it is launched is if you guys have flyers that you really like and you, know, you want to continue to use those flyers, please email them to me. Um, you know, as we're developing this system, we plan on you know, having 30, 40, 50 different flyers for you guys to access. And so if you have flyers that you love, please email them to me and I will uh, make sure that they get included into your back office. So um, that's the new flyer center that we're working on. You go back here. Um, we also create, uh, the next thing I want to talk about are our mobile websites and we're really proud of our mobile websites. Um, you know, we have a couple really nice features that most people don't know about even 
And uh, one thing about our mobile websites is if you go to this single property webpage, which this one happens to be 2480 um, com. if you go here on a smartphone, it will automatically know that you're on a smartphone and it won't show you this version of the website, it's going to show you the mobile version of the website. And to show you the mobile version, I just have to go in my browser, type mobile. And then as you can see here, this is what it would look like. Let me close some of these background folders. All right. And this is what our mobile website looks like. So on this particular property, someone can scroll through all the pictures by just sliding the pictures over. They can get all of the same property information. They can schedule a showing. So if they want to you know, schedule a showing to see this property, um, you know, they can do that by just clicking on this button. They can share the listing with someone. They can view where this property is on a map. This will open up the maps on their phone. Or they can even get directions. Um, you know, so if they're you know, in their car or something and they want to get directions to this property, they can easily get directions um, by visiting the mobile website. They can also see all the property detail and property overview. And then they can see your information down here at the bottom. So and if they wanted to call you, they can just click this on their smartphone and it will automatically pull your number up so they can uh, give you a call. And they can also visit your website. Coy, I think we're getting a little bit of a delayed reaction on the screen. I also want to go to the... Okay. Just because yeah, it's sorry, first showing my, uh... my documents up here. I think it's it's running slower, so... It's not. It's not showing the. Mo it's showing the mobile site in the background. There we go. Now it's showing the mobile site. Okay. Yeah. So that's a that's a pretty long delay. I'm sorry about that. So do you see? What do you see now? Do you see the presented by? We see the property information on, screen, on the mobile site. Up? You see the, the actual mobile site with schedule a showing, share listing. Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty long delay. Let me see if I can't close out a couple of my tabs here. Now what do you... Did you see me move that there, Lori? Um, it's still on the, the mobile uh, creative that shows property information, schedule is showing, share listing. Okay. For the Loveland, Colorado property. All right. Tell me when you see the screen go big. Okay. Because <laughs> I just clicked it. Murphy's Law, finished. right? Yep. I'm going to stop showing my screen, and then I'm going to start again. Okay. We apologize for this. This is actually the first time yeah. we've had a delayed response like this. All right, and I just turned it back on, so tell me. Okay, we see the, um, the main page for the Real Pro Features webinar the go to webinar page from Citrix. Okay, yeah, I, I turned it back on a few seconds ago. There we go. We see Did anything the, pop the back up yet? Yeah, we see that the Saddle Notch Road property information okay. site. Alright. And then I just clicked to the back office. Let me see if tell me when that, that moves for you. And if it, You're not yet. Thank <laughs> you. 
There we go, it's in the back office. It's really running slow. That's that's interesting. Yeah, that that's that's a huge delay. Um we are seeing if there's anything we can do here on our end to fix that, to see if anybody is downloading something here or something. Now it's back to the saddle notch screen for the property information. All right, I'm going to try one more time to stop showing my screen. Okay. To the audience, we apologize. We run like three webinars um, a month, and this is the first time we've had a, dele a delayed reaction on this. So if you could bear with us just for a few more minutes. Technology is wonderful until it doesn't work. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> then it leaves me standing here tap dancing. Okay, I, I turned it back on so you should see my screen. Yes, you see the dashboard. The dashboard. And now do you see this the mobile site? Um, now I see the listings. Okay. So it's still a little bit of a delayed reaction. Hopefully I can uh, you know, go ahead and uh, show you guys the, a few last features here. Um, again, I have no idea what's going on as this has never happened before, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to get through this. So I showed you guys the, the mobile sites that we have. And uh, you know another feature that I'd like to go ahead and uh, show you really quickly um, is the um, the call capture features that we have that we are working on and so I'm also in the back office of our development server again and uh, do you see my back office now Lori? I see the back office that the header is listings now now it's back to all the icons okay all right good so uh, hope very shortly we just got the sign writers in this week and uh, basically we are launching a call capture feature for all of our um, Realtors, and what this means is they can uh, put a sign writer on top of their um, normal yard signs that they have. This says for 24-hour information, call this number, and they can type in a four-digit code. And when somebody types a four-digit code, they will hear information about the property, and they can get uh, the mobile website texted to their smartphone. They can be connected with a realtor or the loan officer, and uh, you know to talk more about this property. What you would do is. Uh, as a real estate agent, you would go into the Manage Extensions button, and you would see all of the extensions that are assigned to you. And then you would, and then do you see this screen, Lori? Yes, we do. Where it says Call Capture Management? Yes. Awesome. So it's at, acting a little better. Um, and what you would do is you go to Add Property, and then you can select one of your properties that you would like to add a call capture number for. And then at that time, what happens is, is if somebody calls the 800 number that you can see here, and they type in extension 1041, they would hear a uh, a computerized version of the description that uh, that we currently have on file for that property. But if somebody would like to record their own description, that's not a problem either. They can uh, they can call in to the 800 number themselves. They can um, dial the extension and then press nine and then they would be asked for their four-digit code, which is right here. And if they didn't like the computerized description that we have, they can enter in their own listing description. The best part about this call capture system is as soon as someone calls, we text the realtor um, to let them know that somebody has called on their property. We also will send them an email, and uh, we will capture that person's caller ID. So even if they try to block their caller ID because they're calling a toll-free number, we can capture that number for them so they can see who has called on their property. And so basically, if they would like to change their call capture number, you know, for different properties, if they'd like to set it, you know, maybe they don't want to be notified every time or they want to, um, you know, they want to send some of their call capture text to a different real estate agent, they can easily edit that here. Um, and they can also, if they didn't want to record something but they wanted to um, have a different description, um, be played each time somebody calls that home, 
they can uh, you know type in anything else here and this is what will be played when someone calls so um, there's a couple features that we have um, and every time somebody calls one of their homes they will again this is on our development servers that's why you saw that screen anytime somebody calls they'll be able to click into their call log menu and they'll see every call that they've had on each one of their properties so this is a, a feature that we have had out to a few agents in beta and uh, they are loving it I mean we had we've had um, several agents get you know over a hundred calls um, you know in the first few weeks you know by putting these sign writers on their properties so um, this is another feature that we're really really excited about and then another new feature that is already live um, that you guys may or may not have noticed um, since the last time we talked we also have a website wallpaper um, icon in your back office so we had it so agents could change the colors of their websites and so what that allowed them to do was uh, you know to change the the top and bottom borders and things like that as you can see on my screen here um, you know the different color schemes that we had available yeah it's it's delaying again on the screen is it yeah it's just still showing the dashboard then it's now it's on ad listings where the Craigslist is and now we're going to the color scheme page okay it's spinning so now do you see the color schemes? No, we see the spinning Internet Explorer. There we go. Now you see the color schemes. Awesome. So these are the different color schemes that we have. Um, you know, so if you wanted to change the colors on all of your websites, but within the last week or two, we have added a website wallpaper. And what this wallpaper does is it allows you to change the background. So right now we have a plain background on each one of your listings. But if you would like to change it, um, you know, the, a, to a different color or a different, um, you know, look, um, you can actually click from one of these many different images. And do you see my screen now, Lori, where I'm at website wallpaper? No, it's still on col color scheme. Okay. Well, you guys can, uh, hopefully my screen will catch up here shortly, but uh, when you log into your back office, you can definitely see the icon that says website wallpaper, and uh, you can change it, and you can select, we have, it looks like uh, four, we have about eight different w website wallpapers that you can choose from, and you can also upload your own wallpaper. So if you, uh, you know, if you want a customized wallpaper, you can upload your own. There we go. It's on the screen now. So you would just, uh, hopefully that's, okay. So you can select from any one of these. And when you change this wallpaper, though, the thing that you need to realize is it changes the wallpaper on every one of your listings. Um, so just want you guys to be aware that when you change the wallpaper, it'll, it'll be throughout your whole entire website. So you would just select one, click the Submit button, and uh, all of your website's wallpapers would be changed. And then I'm going to go to a website here, and you tell me when it pops up, Lori. What I did is I selected a, uh, a wallpaper with a uh, beach background. And just tell me when it shows up. It does show the selected image, and now it's spinning so that it's it's loading that. Mm -hmm. Well, on my screen, um, hopefully you guys will be able to see it here in a few seconds. Um, you, you can see we have a nice beach background for our wallpaper, so you guys can easily change that or upload your upload your own background images. Wow, if it's showing on your screen but not ours, here we go. Now it's showing. Okay.
So it places the flyer on top of the new image. Well, it places the background image background. behind it. Correct. Right. Places everything behind it. So that covers up uh, most of the things that we have, Lori. And uh, I don't know how much, uh, you know, we do have some of the social sharing features that uh, everyone should check out. Um, you know, in the upper right-hand corner, um, as you can see on the, the page that's on your screen, um, you know, we do have, these are social sharing um, or social media um, links to your web pages. So if you have a Facebook or a Twitter account or LinkedIn, you can post those uh, links in your back office and then those buttons will appear. And uh, it's also, you know, I didn't talk about the social media links for each property, such as the Facebook icon, the Twitter, the Pinterest, um, where you can email the listing to someone or the Google Plus One. Um, you know, those are all different social media aspects that, uh, you know, so you can easily share your properties to different, uh, to different places. And it's really simple to do. If you just click on the Facebook icon, it might ask you to log in if you're not already logged into pay Facebook. And then it'll ask you to select which photo you would like to display. And it'll automatically type um, the listing description about the property. And you can easily post to Facebook um, all of your properties. So instead of logging into Facebook and having to upload properties, having to type in the description, this makes it really simple for you to, uh, to share your listings socially without a lot of work. So all you do is have to visit your page and click the button and everything auto populates for you. And um, so that, that pretty much covers it um, for today. Lori, do we have any questions? You know, we don't have any questions typed in today. Um, I would encourage anyone, I think you're going to put the contact list up if they have any questions to uh, later on to email any of us. And we do apologize for this delayed response. I don't really know if it's on GoToWebinar's part, since your screen shows on your end, or if it's, I, I don't know where it's at. Yeah, I have no idea either. Um, I've probably done 100 webinars, and this is the first time it's been delayed like this. So, so I, I apologize to everyone about that. If you have questions, please ask them. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about our, our next Real Pro webinar is scheduled for Thursday, August 22nd at 10 a.m. And it's entitled How to Make Money with Real Pro or Real Pro 301. And this webinar is intended for realtors who are more or less power users of Real Pro, but any realtor at any level can attend and would take away valuable information from that webinar. It'll cover topics such as how to assist realtors who are looking for buyers and sellers, HUD homes, for sale by owner properties, marketing pocket listings, builder marketing, and managing both time and data. So um, Commerce Mortgage provides ongoing support for RealPro, and we have a team dedicated to supporting all of our realtor partners with RealPro training, implementation, and success. Um, your your Commerce Mortgage Loan Officer is your first line of support for RealPro information, but as I said earlier, I am the Director of Development for RealPro, and I'm responsible for managing all the technical aspect of RealPro, such as software updates and implementing new features and enhancements to the RealPro site. Um, Lori Flores is Commerce Mortgage's Marketing Manager, and she is responsible for managing communications, collaterals, and all user questions. And we also have Josh Brooks, and he's our business development executive for RealPro, and it's kind of the face of RealPro out in the field. And Josh is frequently found in real estate offices throughout California and Colorado, where he leads RealPro training sessions and works with our realtor partners to ensure success um, in the use of the Commerce RealPro system. So if you guys have any questions at all regarding Commerce RealPro, please contact your loan officer, Lori, Josh, or myself. And as you can see, hopefully, a are, is the contact information on the screen, Lori? It is on the screen, and since then we did have a question come in. Awesome. Okay. Uh, the question is, how have people used this to generate seller leads? To seller leads? So if they're looking for sellers, uh, you know, the, the for sale by owner training that we have in our next, um, you know, I kind of touched on how to attract for sale by owners. And... Uh, Basically, you know, we, we have a whole spiel on how to do that and, you know, how to attract those um, buyers. Most for sale by owners will um, 
allow you to market their home, you know, and they'll actually pay you a commission if you find a buyer. So we have a, a whole portion, um, you know, just to that. We also, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can implement um, into your listing presentations as well. So if you are on a listing presentation, um, you know, e even if your brokerage supplies a lot of the features that RealPro does, I mean, maybe your brokerage, I mean, maybe you already have a website, and you already, um, you know, maybe they create YouTube videos and, you know, like we do, and they, they do a lot of things that the RealPro system does. But, uh, you know, telling a prospective seller that you do that twice or you do it three times is very powerful. So, you know, even though you might feel like you're duplicating your efforts somewhat on um, the RealPro system, you know, I know of agents who, um, when they go on listing presentations, I mean, they go over all the features that RealPro does, you know, and they talk about, you know, how they're creating, you know, maybe their broker creates a mobile site and, a, you know, a website and everything for them, but they, they talk about how they're doing this, you know, themselves, and they're also creating another site, um, you know, and showing that, uh, you know, seller that you're willing, you know, you're going to do more work than, uh, you know, what a typical agent would do, how you're going to create more websites, you're going to, you know, share, make sure that their, um, you know, listings are shared on Facebook and Twitter and all, all these social media outlets. Um, it only makes your list, listing presentation much stronger than what it currently is. So, um, like I said, I, I encourage everybody to, you know, show up next week for the, uh, you know, how we talk about how to attract some of the for sale by owners and how you can, you know, attract builders and things like that. But, you know, including this into your listing presentation is, is kind of a no-brainer, and uh, we do talk about that next week as well on, you know, different ways to implement it into your listing presentation to, uh, to win more listings. Okay, thank you, Coy. Are there any other questions, Lori? No further questions that I'm seeing that have come in. And once again, if the realtors or loan officers on the call have any further questions, please feel free to contact us, um, one of us on the Real Pro team and we'll make sure those are answered right away for you. Yep. Again, I, I apologize. I have no idea what the deal with the Internet is. Um, I'll see if I can figure it out, but uh, this is definitely the first time. I'm guessing it's something on their end because, um, you know, because we don't have anything going on here. Okay. Well, people can't see it, but I was tap dancing in the background, so... Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, um, thanks. Thanks for attending, everyone. And uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll see all you guys next week. Okay. Thank you, Koi.